host Delaney. This is Katie. Welcome to Classically Black Podcast. Where we talk all things classical music and being black in the profession. With trap beats playing in the background. Hey sis. Hello. Wow. <laughs> Good over there? More than fine. Thank you. Wow. How's your week? Who knows? My day was much worse than my week, but Ooh, child. You okay? Mm. We'll see. Um <laughs> What? This is just not a great time in the semester for anybody. That's true. Like in the middle, like yeah. you, you think you made it through midterms, and like, this will go to the other side and realize it's much, much worse. Right. So we'll see how that turns out for me and for everyone else who is in their feelings this time of year. Tis the season. Speaking of tis the season, actually, I was in my lesson. Well, back up a little bit. I was in orchestra chilling counting my wrists being a good little noodle and good little um, noodle yep i just uh okay and i hear something start to crack a lacking i look down okay seam on my base wide open not wide open right okay, <laughs> it could have been well, it, i mean it was still open enough like right, right. you know but it could have been worse could have been much worse but the seam on my base popped open i've never actually been there when it actually pops open i've only found open seam right but i've never actually like been like oh that just happened so i'm in my feelings um and i text my teacher he's like tis the season i was like wow <laughs> <laughs> wow because it gets so dry up here at this time of year mm-hmm. all your, everybody's glue always dries out but so that's highlight of my week <laughs> um I am not as deep in my feelings as I probably should be because that midterm grade on that one thing, well, you know, I ain't gonna talk about that. But, um, I just have three short things I want to get off my chest because I feel like I can't move forward unless I say this. The first one is I just don't understand people who don't mind their business. Like, I just, because for me, I've never been a nosy person. So when people come into my space and they're asking questions that they have no business asking or they inquiring about things they shouldn't inquire, it just befuddles me all the time. I'm always, I am confusion in those situations because it's, it just does, it just blows my mind. The second thing is don't come to my lessons unprepared. I don't understand how you can't prepare three little raggedy measures for me and have them ready for the next week. Like, aren't you tired of week after week me being like, this sounds the same, if not worse. Wow. Last week. Did my teacher email you? Anyway. For you to tell you tell and, me this? And low-key, uh, my cello, I was, I was, I'll be so rude sometimes. Not all the time, but, like, sometimes. I was like, all right, y'all. Um, I'm so sorry the cello's decided not to practice. So we're going to just do this right quick. I'm so sorry for this. So I was like, all right. So it was like three or four measures. And I was like, okay, let's play it slowly. Just note by note. Okay, let's add the rhythm. Okay, let's play it three times. Okay, let's play it faster. Oh, let's go back and do it again. Let's play it three times. It's like five minutes later. I'm like, and that's called practicing. And wow. you decided to waste everyone's time in doing it here. So now we gotta. And they looked uh, at me like. I wouldn't like Miss Brown. You there would, are a lot you of. You would have liked Miss Brown because you would have done your work. I would ha- At that age, probably not. Now, at this point, oh, definitely. I would be like, ah, oh, Miss Brown, but Miss Brown, the homie. First of all, I got this one student in my class who stands for me because because she's always like, uh, y'all better leave her alone. Right. I'm, <laughs> I'm always a student that stands for the rude teacher because I'm rude. So we two peas in a pod. <laughs> right. She cracks me up because she'd be like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, Ooh. I did not deserve these kids. Like, they are hilarious. Like, it's just. This is a good time. And the third thing, it's 2018 and people still decide to be hurtful. Like y'all drawing swastikas on stuff. Y'all leaving nooses in, in bathrooms. And this is from like the bottom of like you're, you're, you're just starting out your career at the conservatory to the top of the top best orchestras. They find nooses in dressing rooms. I just want to make it very clear to y'all just in case you weren't aware that black people and gay people and Jewish people, and we're not going anywhere. And like the thing I don't understand is like 
somewhere around the 19th, like the 1900s, y'all should have been like, oh, shoot, like, we took these people from their country and enslaved them, and, like, they're still here. Like, wow, like, they must got something. Of conscience, which... They really, like, they must, they must got something going on. And, like, black people are, are lit because, like, we're, I think we're very much a people who are in spite of, like, we are lit in spite of we are tenacious in spite of we are successful in spite of it's like why don't you just want to buy into that why don't you want to be a part of what we have to offer but instead you rather spew hate and we're not going anywhere this music is our music just as much as it is yours me your music and we're here and we play well and we play with seasoning and we're not we're not going anywhere so it's just tired like i be i'm just so exasperated when you hear stuff you see nooses you see swastikas like what are you doing why don't you focus take that same energy and focus on your raggedy intonation your boring phrasing and your lackluster tone quality like why don't you do that and that's all i have to say um this (laughs) week on katie's rants i just i'm just so tired i'm just so exasperated i just i don't know what to do but you know what we're here now um and it's gonna be a great show i'm excited today for our um, shenanigans and other things. Alrighty. <laughs> um, news this week. There's two pieces of news. Um, the first is about a pianist uh, from Philadelphia who uh, was forced into retirement because of Parkinson's. So this caught my eye f- because it reminded me of a movie that I watched called A Late Quartet about a string quartet. And they had drama going on. You know, I love some tea. Right. They had a bunch of drama. Like, the, ooh, okay, ooh, I'm just remembering. But um, the the cellist in the quartet was a lot older than everyone else. So he started developing Parkinson's. Mm-hmm. And it was, like, it was just, like, really, really sad to see, you know, him, his ability to play slowly start to go. But this is what um reminded me, or that's what this article reminded me of. Um, this pianist, his name is Leon Bates. He's the epitome of black excellence. He was out here. Uh, his, some of his career highlights include soloing with the Philadelphia Orchestra. Um, I think that was like in his twenties, but, um, he's a little bit older now, but he was scheduled to do, uh, some concerts with the Philadelphia Chamber Music Society and they, um, decided you know, since he had to retire, that they were going to do the concerts in his honor. Not oh, like, wow. like he was going to be there, mm-hmm. but like, um, yeah, but they were going to, you know, do it for him instead of with him, mm-hmm. and, you know, as a tribute to him and his career. Um, so I don't know. I just thought his story was really inspiring and he's has a very positive outlook on this because he's had a very successful career and very um, a meaningful career. Mm-hmm. So he's sort of just like, you know, this was my time and I'm really, you know, he's really happy with what he look, what he's able to look back on. So I don't know. I just thought he had a very, you know, it, it's a shame that his career, you know, had to end this way, but still. It's crazy. I feel like I, I at least in my personal experience, I, um, I think I take for granted a lot of the time that I haven't been injured. Thank God. Um, and like what we do, it, it seems like, oh, you're just playing an instrument, but it's so strenuous. I mean, you're using really finite muscles. A lot of the times I, I find myself, like, I really want a big sound, so I might press, I might tense up and get something like that, and it can really cause, like, lifelong problems. I, I have friends who have been injured, and it's like, what we do is so strenuous, even though it doesn't seem like it is, and it's like, if you are so lucky if you haven't been injured, and I think I take that for granted sometimes, too. Right. He, um... Uh, he also will, you know, continue to teach and do master classes mm. and stuff like that. So it's not, you know, all bad. And, you know, people can at least still continue to learn from him. Um, he can still contribute to the mu- the classical music community with his knowledge and expertise. So, I don't know. There we go. That's Leon Bates. He is not the official Black Excellence, but he is one of many right. Black Excellence. Um Next piece of news is lit. Uh, So I saw this article uh, called the Ill Harmonic Orchestra. I'm here for it. (laughs) Right. Blends classical music with old school hip hop. So basically this orchestra 
of people who are black and excellent are out here um blending classical music you know popular songs like for example beethoven five okay songs pieces <laughs> classical pieces with popular songs um by you know some of it old some they say old school rap but they, i see them mentioning Nicki minaj in this article Ooh. Yeah, I hesitate <laughs> to say that. I mean, I have no opinion on that, but you know. Neither do I. I have no opinion on Nicholas and her shenanigans. Um. <laughs> all right. So other artists include Wu Tang Clan, Lauren Hill, The Roots, etc. Um. So yeah, they're just out here doing the work of the people. Um. They have a new album, uh, called Ooh, Maniac Maestro. Sorry, I almost read the song title. But um and it's a tribute to marching bands. Oh, cool. Right. Like like HBCU sound marching yeah. bands. So um uh, I'm gonna put a link to this article and you can see like um their website and uh the advertisement for their new album and they have like a video up here so you can like see what they're doing. And yeah, that's it for news this week. That's all I have. Great. So now we're moving on to intermission. So this week, <laughs> this week we're going to play a little game of would you rather? Hmm. Not, uh, it's, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm excited to see what you're going to say. Okay. So am I. <laughs> okay. So would you rather have old strings or old bow hair old strings why i don't i feel like strings are just more i don't know i feel like at a certain point i guess i've played on old strings and just gotten used to it you Mm -hmm. don't really realize that they're old like i don't know like the strings on the last bass that i had because i borrowed that bass from school Mm mm-hmm girl i don't even know how old them strings were yeah i think bass is a little bit different because for viola at least for my viola if i'm playing uh, on old strings because like i know i try to change my strings three times four times a year like just per- for every season so when i'm on old strings it literally like it sounds like i'm underwater like to me especially because like yeah. i have a pretty resonant sound so so when <laughs> I wish y'all had there was cameras in here because Delaney is so irritating. I have a pretty resonant sound. So when <laughs> when I don't have new strings on, <laughs> when I don't have new strings on, I I literally feel like there, it sounds like something stuck in my throat or it sounds like I'm underwater. But new hair, bow hair. I see. I used to be really good about changing my bow hair. I used to do it like four times a year. Now it's like twice but like my bow hair right now i definitely need the bow hair it, i might as well be playing on connect along hair all right like, so <laughs> like, um, like my bow literally sounds like i went to the beauty supply store and bought <laughs> braided hair anyway um <laughs> i just think that because like i get what you're saying because i hate it when because my bass is really it's not even just my sound my bass is very loud mm-hmm. like even for me for someone because i don't play loud and that's something that i that I've struggled with for so so long, but I don't play loud, but my bass is loud. So I noticed when there were older strings on it, mm-hmm. it was just like pulling teeth. I was like, this is not the way my bass sounds. Right. However, old bow hair, ain't nothing you can do for that. It don't matter what type it, of rosin you put on there. It don't matter what type Especially of Especially for rosin. us, our rosin is so thick and sticky. Mm-hmm. It builds up mm-hmm. and, and it'll make it dirty and just like crunchy. Yeah. And so like it just... It, it's nothing you could do for that so that's why i'd rather have old strings but i was having i haven't been satisfied with the bow hair in like the past three years and i know that sounds dramatic but i just haven't been so that's why like i've just started dragging my feet on changing my bow hair because i'm just like for what so i can be disappointed for a week and sound like trash i don't know i'm not throwing shade on anybody i just haven't been satisfied with the bow hair but we're gonna have to get right or get left because i can't keep <laughs> living this way okay would you rather have a bow that doesn't say taut or a string that can go flat at any moment. So you know how you, when you were like younger, you would loosen your bow all the way, so like the hairs be. So people used to do that. They used to loosen it all the way and then take the frog off. Yeah, I used to do that because I was trifling. Wow. Okay, swinging it around. <laughs> I never did. <laughs> I never did that junk. I, that junk, I'll be looking at like, who raised y'all? They swinging it around. This ain't no hockey puck. <laughs> 
Um, so it could go. It don't stay taut. Like it can yeah. go. It can do that at any minute. Or your string go flat. Any string go flat at any minute. It should go flat. Because I've had that happen. Um, because oh, when I, I used to play a baroque orchestra and they did not have a viol on it or any type of baroque bass for me to use, so I was playing on a modern instrument and tuning it down to four fifteen, so it was going oh, sharp. God. Every five minutes, I was retuning. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> and everybody looking over their shoulder at me because I'm landing on a note that's that's tense and sharp. It's not my fault. Sorry, mm-hmm. like I don't know, but the bow the bow thing will probably scare me because I think my bow broke. For me, I just remember what Mrs. Taylor says: like no bow, no sound. So, I mean, okay, Pitts means nothing to him. <laughs> Okay, GT, you hear that? It's like, nah. <laughs> it's like, nah. Uh, okay, would you rather... Okay, so you're about to play an audition, right? Yeah. Would you rather get a fresh part with no bowings or fingerings for an excerpt or play from memory? So you you rolling up to your, your New York Phil audition. You got Haydn Laban, Don Juan... Beethoven 5, whatever. <laughs> you, you get mad when I say stuff like this, so never mind. Uh, what? Hiding labor. <laughs> you know, I don't know no German. Yeah, for, what, what do you say? For, you said tight, you can spell. Because <laughs> first of all, I don't like the piece, so uh, y'all ain't gonna really focus too hard on what it's saying <laughs> on there. Anyway, what is it? Hiding labor. Hell and labor. Girl, boo. I was thinking of hiding. Yeah. That's why, because I was like, hiding. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that one little raggedy ease what you caught me up on anyway okay so you rolled up to your audition and um i don't know they were like you can either pay for memory or you can use our music have i been practicing this i hope so if you're going to the new york phil audition sis no but i'm saying like yes you've been practicing then i'd rather just have a fresh part with no bowings and no fingerings because i probably wouldn't at that point probably not reading them anyway yeah that's true Memory yeah. be slipping me up. There'd just be certain little things. I'm not playing Don Juan from memory. And I and I know most of my excerpts from memory. Like if you were to ask me if you were to ask me right now to play if you were to ask me right now, like play Hoffner. Okay, play Hoffner. Please take my privacy at this time. <laughs> Where's your viola? Um She's tired. She's been working all day. Oh. Um, well, Katie's a virtual, so I know she'd be practicing anyway, 12 like, hours a day. Wow. Um, yeah, if you ask me, like, play Hoffner, play Don Juan, I could do it, and I will play it from memory. But I don't mean I'm going to go in no audition with my with my chest all out. <laughs> like, like, I'm not doing that. I'm going to have my bowlings with, with all my writings on it and all my little right. reminders, all my cues, all my process cues, like, everything. Like, I'm not going to be out here playing from memory. Like, I don't know how to act. But then you know it's also around my brain. If I don't, I need to have simple things written in. Like, if there's like a fingering that I always missed, I need that junk in. Yeah. So looking at a blank part, no matter how well I know it, it's gonna stress me out. One time, <laughs> one time I was going to a mock audition. And I was early, so that's why I'm like being early. I was early. I was doing everything I was supposed to do. I was there. I was in my black. I was doing everything. While my music was at home. And what was I, what was I, what was being early gonna, how does being early have any effect on me? Because I feel like I was too relaxed when I'm, when I'm rushing. Does that make any sense? When you're rushing, you forget more. Okay, your music and your viola at home. (laughs) (laughs) No, because when, (laughs) no, because when I'm in a rush, I'm used to being in a rush. So I'd be on my P's and Q's, but I was all relaxed. No, you're not, that's an oxymoron. You're in a rush, so no, you're not on your P's and Q's. I'm literally always running late. I never forget that one day I was like, nah, I'm finna be on time. Melissa said, brah, 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 I'm finna be there. I get there, left my music, and what am I gonna do? She hired people to come and listen to us. So I was like, well, what are we finna do? So I had to ask another viola to use her music. Okay, I've like, like I've never, ever played freaking uh, Don Juan before. Melissa was looking at me like, are you okay? Okay, Mendelssohn, never before, sight reading. And I, it's like, I know, I know how to play it. So, uh, fresh music, I don't know what I would be. I'll be like, I'll just take my L and go home, to be oh, honest. Yeah, I'd just rather have that than, mem- than for memory. Yes, I yeah. don't know. But side note, if you want to hear Katie do Hoffner and Don Juan, like she said oh, she okay. could, go ahead and leave us a comment below this video. And we're moving on. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Um, would you? Okay, it's kind of shady. Oh gosh. Okay. Would you rather only play new music for the rest of your life? Well, or only play one composer's music for the rest of your life? It could be any composer, but you can only play their music for the rest of your life. Or you could play new music. I'm talking about new, new. I ain't talking about no. Yeah, it's just gonna Stravinsky. have to be. It's gonna have to be one composer. Really? Yeah, I'm not even. Do I have to pick one? I really don't care as long as it's not, <laughs> because I'm not giving up all of them. All of them great composers. But then you gotta sit around and play Brahms for the rest of your life. For the rest of your life. But what? New music? Blue Cathedral by Jennifer Hiddon. Okay, but go. Some people are writing. You know. I know they are writing good stuff, but I don't know. I'd rather do I that. Like, cause, like, I love Mendelssohn, but I'd rather, I'd rather play new music for the rest of my life than play Mendelssohn, like, you know, or, like, even someone who who wrote for the viola more, you know, like, uh, Brahms. He didn't really write for viola, but fine. Like, Brahms. I, I wouldn't want to play the same composer's music. All that thick. Okay, meat and potatoes every day for dinner. Well, it'll have to be Brahms, but Mozart. Mozart would be good for you, because he wrote orchestra stuff, opera stuff. You but know. only Mozart forever. I mean, I rather I rather do new music. I see what you're saying, but I rather do new music because new music is so much like even if you did like like 1990 and beyond. You know, to be fair, I rather do that. I guess maybe I'm just I'm ignorant. No, 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 no. I don't. I mean, I I respect your opinion. I'm just saying. I respect your opinion. I'm just saying that I could not one composer, and I like variety. That's my problem. Maybe if I didn't like variety, I'll be like, yeah, I could listen to Tchaikovsky every day for the rest of my life. It'd be fine. Listen and play. Woo, chow. I don't know. Um. Okay. Would you rather have guaranteed success in any other field, i.e. money, fame, fortune, or continue on the path that you have chosen? Are you really gonna put me out here? This is a hard one for me. Really? How different did the feel have to be? It couldn't be. It couldn't be music related. It couldn't be arts related. But it's guaranteed success. Like every every step, it's like whatever. So say you go to dental school, it's like you graduate top of your class, you get the dream job. You might even be like celebrity. You might be recognized in the field for your work and your advancement in dentistry. Guaranteed success. Money, fame, whatever. Or you're a lawyer. You're a big time lawyer. Like you you graduate top of your class in law school. I'm talking about like top 5%. You graduate. Boku money. Boku fame. You know, like. Cardi be the first one she called when she goes to jail yet again for offset goes to court rather or you continue on the path that you've chosen my first instinct was to pick the former that was my first instinct but now I'm like I just would not be happy I just would not be happy like I know I would be and maybe honestly if you had asked me this like literally maybe weeks ago I probably would have been like yeah the former Oof. if I'm sad. Like, I'm not trying to be like I don't know weird about it, but like, if you ask me a couple, maybe right now we're on a high because we just uh, announced this podcast, and you know we mm-hmm. we excited, about, you know whatever. This is a new piece of my career. But if I'm, if you asked me a couple weeks ago, like when I was in a place where first of all I'm in my feelings, and second of all, not, nothing new, nothing exciting has been happening for a while, then I might be like. Well, that's fair, you know. Yeah, it's but fair. at this point, like, I'm all cheesing about this mm-hmm. podcast, like, n- thinking about being something else, even though I have other interests, they're very limited. And for it to have nothing to do with music, yeah, it would be, then it would be nothing, it would be like, I'm about to continue on this raggedy path I'm on right now, even though money solves most problems. I don't care what nobody says, um, it, it literally. Um, I would definitely, I would stay on the path I am. I have no idea where the path is going. I too have been in my feelings. I don't know. This intonation 
what? It was like a bad cold. Like, I just... My mind was like pneumonia. Anyway, <laughs> I was like, sis, like, I was not playing well. I was in my feelings. And I mean, like, thank God I'm on the, on the other side of that. But I was, even then, I was like, I just, I've come so far. I just want to see what happens. So... It's just like yeah, you, you just out here. You're a virtual. So okay, we're degrees. gonna move. Yeah, you gonna stop lying to the Certif- listeners. That's not a, that's not a lie. You do have a teaching degree. Okay, yeah, I do have a teaching degree. Certified yes. to teach, okay, educator. Okay, anyway, perform more. Okay, we're gonna move. On. <laughs> okay, let's do just a couple more. Um, would you rather? Oh, that's my favorite one. Oh, okay, <laughs> would you rather make out? Oh my god, with Masorski to get your crush. Or make out with your crush and never see him again. I could feel the vomit creeping up in my throat. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Because not only wow do I not like Mazorski as like like appearance wise, I'm not talking about his music, but not only am I not a fan of the way he looks, I also just don't like anybody in general. So, <laughs> could be not cr- not not kissing anyone. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so I, don't even like, I don't even like my crushes, sis. What's <laughs> what's the answer? I would. What are the second one? I would kiss my hypothetical crush. You have a crush, sis? No, hmm. I don't. <laughs> Masorski, do you know who Six Nine is? The rapper. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Masorski reminds me of Six Nine, do. doesn't he? Yep. In the way that Six Nine, if you look real closely, like past the fact that you literally went to the tattoo artist multiple times and asked them to draw on your face, if you look past that and the hair, I guess we're calling the hair. Um, <laughs> Six Nine is actually very attractive. Wow! Whoa! 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 <laughs> whoa. These you- mics are malfunctioning. They are. <laughs> They, they are putting words into our mouths. Oh, we're going to the mic store Six, first nine, thing in the morning. You got, <laughs> no, you got to look closely. First of all, what kind of eyes that you got that can look past all that? Okay, okay, wow. <laughs> what Slow kind down. of eyes you got? Six nine is attractive. He is, <laughs> but you know what makes it? You know, you know, you know what makes him unattractive? The face. The like not not his face. He's attractive, but Shut. his appearance makes him unattractive. What? Six nine is a classic example of a guy that went out of his way and did everything in his power not to be attractive. And that's one of my pet peeves. It's like attractive men that go out of their way to be unattractive. Like they do things. Masorski wasn't ugly when he was younger. Like he really wasn't. But when he got older, you just can't just give up like that. So I know my my lips would not be touching Masorski. Like I can tell you that much. I'm just stuck on six nine junk. I just looked up pictures of him. I just six don't nine. Get it. I just do you have to look. It. I'm looking. But if you gotta try that hard, what's the why is it worth it? <laughs> if okay. I gotta dig, if my if my eyes gotta okay. grow arms and dig through all all of that. I'm just just saying, to get to somebody who kind of cute, <laughs> but I'm what I'm I'm saying that like he did everything in his power to be unattractive because if you look very closely, you know, like he has a cute face, he does, but the teeth and mm-hmm. the hair and the tattoos, and you what? really tattoo six nine on what? your chest, um, um, and your face, wow, and your face. Um, I'm just gonna have to agree to disagree, but also. Was six nine though? He don't got no excuse. Mazorski, they were showering once a year back then. That is you true. in twenty eighteen. But that's the same. You... That's the same thing. Why I'm not kissing Mazorski? Like besides the fact, because there's plenty of, of of fine young men that put themselves together in you know eighteen hundred Russia. You know what I'm saying? And somehow you kind of slipped through the cracks and. I'm my lips are not touching. Meanwhile, my my face starts to melt. Right. I'd rather, I'm just gonna have to take an L on the crush. Like what that that episode SpongeBob where he thought he was ugly with all right. that green corn <laughs> in his mouth. That's exactly what he gonna exactly. be like. Hey girl. Meanwhile, all that green cloud coming out of his mouth. Nah. I'd rather make out with my crush and never see them again. But mm. you know I don't. 
I like Katie's crush. I don't. I see you. Anyway, um, please respect my privacy at this time. Okay, last one because we got to move on. Okay. <laughs> this one's hilarious, I think. Would, okay. Would you rather go on a road trip from New York to LA? So mind you, that's like a day and a half oh. if you don't stop. Yeah, because okay. like, because I know from like Chicago to LA, it's like an hour and a an hour. You know I mean? <laughs> it's a day. It's a day and like speedy three. Gonzalez. <laughs> it's like a day and three hours. So it's like whatever. Would you go, rather go on a road trip from New York to LA, only listening to Meek Mill, or only listening to the Ring Cycle? Now let me tell you really quickly why I pick Meek Mill because Meek Mill, if you listen. You were in the car when Dreams and Nightmares came on. We were going to Wegmans, and you were like, who is yelling? Why are you yelling? That's Meek Mill. Oh, I see. Right? Because I remember, I, I think You I, and him got a lot of common yelling into mics. Wow. <laughs> um, we, uh, I was, I posted on my Insta story. I was like, I want to go see Meek Mill in concert. I still don't know if I have enough Excedrin in the world to... <laughs> 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 to get through oh, it right. so would you rather listen to only meek mill or listen to the ring cycle which wagner writes in a similar fashion it's all loud it's all yelling in german <laughs> most of it so honestly i'd pick the ring cycle wow i would nothing about Anything that Meek Mill does interests me. I don't know. I don't even really remember. I remember saying that, but I don't remember what it sounded like. But I just feel like, especially I only I've only seen like a small clip of the Ring Cycle in music history. But it was the one where he had like them big old giants. Mm -hmm. And the thing about Wagner though is like he don't shy away from the low end and the bassy stuff. So that might actually that might actually do something for me. I'm conflicted because I like Meek Mill. But I'm thinking about me listening to all of that yelling. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and also Meek Mill, it's not like I said someone like Drake who has like a large output. So by the time we get to Pennsylvania, we got to start the track over again. So I was just about to say, does he even have enough music for that? And like, I'm sure he got like plenty of mixtapes and like EPs that we could like you know, but it can't be, I can't see it being more than four hours of music. So literally, at least the ring cycle, we got right, or it, 14, 15 hours. Right. Uh, we, yeah, I'll probably, I'll pick the ring cycle as well. And I, I like rap and I probably, and I don't mind Meek Mill, but the, the lack of contrast is going to do my head. I have a sensitive head. So I get headaches all the time. I probably should go see a doctor. All right. <laughs> <laughs> This playing would you rather and we're moving on Ooh. all right hopefully katie's okay <laughs> <laughs> okay so now we're on to okay so y'all we're gonna start a little series featuring your favorite classical composers where we are just gonna dig in and talk about some of the mess that your faves have been involved in because I think one thing we have to break the stigma about classical music and like getting it to be more accepted and, and just having it be more open is the fact that these people literally were out here I'm talking about like Real Housewives of Atlanta out here right and y'all thought loving hip hop okay like loving magicals right like literally <laughs> loving symphonies some of y'all faves <laughs> who chow <laughs> the ghetto so this week we're talking about carlo gesualdo so i uh i messaged the old professor and i'm like yo we're looking for some mess like who do you recommend and she's like oh you know about gesualdo i said no so i look it up and i i read and i'm like oh you know like a magical is a, a loop player he experimented with chromaticism. I said, how messy could this get? I'm famous like, last words. Famous. Okay, so let me tell you about the homie, right? The okay. homie? Well, first of all, we're going to link We gonna link some of the articles we read. If you got to tell me in the comments, this looked just like the villain from the Powerpuff Girls. Oh, my gosh. The red one. Let us move on. His face. You're not going to tell me that he don't look like the, the villain from Powerpuff Girls. The red one. I forgot his name. The Valentine, I mean, some Valentine. 
and he was all red and his face looked the same way. Wow, history really do repeat itself. <laughs> um, Inspiration, <laughs> right? So I was like, magical list. Like, how bad could it be? All right, so Carlo gets Waldo. He was a prince of Venosa, right? Living in Italy, whatever, whatever. Nothing doing nothing crazy, right? He was married to, let me pull it up. I don't want to say the wrong thing. He was married um, to Donna Maria. Stuff wasn't, it, it stuff wasn't going too well. Cause we talking about two years in, right? So home, homegirl started cheating. She's like, you know what? Well, this ain't it. I'm going to get me a little boo thing on the side, right? Stuff is sweet. She thought that Gizwaldo didn't know. Right. She thought he was none the wiser. Meanwhile. Meanwhile, homie was like, all right, bet. You want to, you want to bring, you want to bring your little dudes into my house? Bet. Right. So what he did was so trifling. So he took, he messed up the locks on the house so that she couldn't lock the doors properly. And then he, he set her up. So he was like, whatever, I'm finna go, like, I, th- I think it was, he was gonna go hunting or, yeah. or something like that. And she was like, so she called him or whatever, however you do that in 1590. He was like, hey, yo. Right, send a message to Pishin. Right, right. Over to his crib. Right, sent the yard board to go run over until, like, hey, That's yep. why the whole town knew. Exactly. Because ain't no, ain't no instant messaging. Right, you can't, you can't DM, you know. can't kick, can't Right, nothing. can't do nothing. So he was like, hey, yo, my husband going, like, you coming over? And he's like, hey, bet. So they over there and they, you know, they doing a thing, you know, they euphoric and Gizwaldo come back. He's like, oh, you thought, why did Gizwaldo kill him? My dude got shot in the arm and the chest and killed the wife too. Like, and mutilated them. I'm talking about guts everywhere. She was covered in blood. And this, this is not even funny, but the, yeah. but the, the funny part about it. Lord forgive me. The funny part is that my dude put him put uh the side his, piece. The side piece uh Fabrizio sound like a side piece name too. Fabrizio. Fabrizio sound like he worked at King of Diamonds. <laughs> he sound like his mom was so tired and his daddy being musty. He was like, You you're not finna be like your daddy. Your name is Fabrizio. Listen. Stay fresh. Stay fresh. <laughs> and he didn't take he did not heed his mama's advice. He was in a nighty. He put why well, I think it's why to put him in a nighty, and with uh stuff to be found, and I mean a lot of this stuff has been like um done up at, over the years, you know. So some people say that one of his um children didn't look like him, so he was like, oh no, that little he gotta go too, <laughs> and. <laughs> That's not funny. He no, I'm not it. laughing at that. I'm not laughing. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not laughing at that. I'm laughing at something you did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Oh, like, he got to go, too. So, they, he start, they talking about they killed the baby as well. No, that's that's sick. Like, dummy messed up. And um, and the, the crazy thing about it is because of Gesualdo's, like, um, prominence, he was a prince, especially after his dad died, he took over. Um. He never, he never, he never paid the price for it. He never, he over walking free. And you know, the messed up thing, we got to go back. The messed up thing is that everybody in the town knew right. that his wife was laid up with Fabrizio. And he say nothing. Check your circle. Check right. your people. Check your homies. Because it'd be your own. It'd be really be your own. Because I wish. Can you imagine? You had, you, you boot up and yo, yo, mm. your boyfriend got a thought and they just around and everybody know, including your homies. Right. <laughs> oh my God. So, yeah, he killed them. And then the crazy part is, this the dude's always prospering. Why he get married a second time? Which? And Sis was cheating on him, too. And that's what it's like. Maybe maybe you're the problem. You know what I'm saying? Because she was like, yo, this is dummy boring. We don't do nothing. Didn't even stay with him. She wasn't even, they weren't even staying at the same castle. Can you imagine? You got a castle in the hills. You don't even stay there. So he, he spent a lot of his life, like, really depressed. And, um, but what... And you could, I think people, uh, historians argue that you could see this kind of depression through his music because his magicals were revolutionary in their chromaticism and the tension they created. Listen, Loki, I stand for a good magical. I'm not doing too much. I'm not doing too much of a magical because, you know. A good magical? Sis. <laughs> so I, I guess revolutionary for its time. I, I will do a magical. I mean, I'm, I'm, I will do one. 
I ain't do two, but you know, <laughs> but um, it, uh, historians argue that you could see this kind of like despair in his music because of the chromaticism that's present. It's kind of it was revolutionary. It wasn't really indicative of magicals at the time, but I mean, he also had a lot going on, and he um he was exiled for a little bit because he deserved to be. Um, and like never really recovered. He died young, 47. Um, but wow. Um, well, <laughs> he, he murdered three people, one of which, one of which was a child. Right. <laughs> so Literally, good riddance. Ooh, child. Um, so I was curious, Delaney, uh, did we talk about our, our, our homie, Gizwalwald? All right. <laughs> Gizzy. G- <laughs> um, have you ever done anything crazy for love? Girl, I ain't even loved, so. You're not loved? Okay, I said I'm not. I haven't even loved. I'm about to say, like, okay, my friendship means nothing to you. Well, close to. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Y'all heard it here first. I'm just kidding. Y'all heard it here first. <laughs> on dirt. She stay on dirt. For sure. Um, or would you? Well, I can't. That's not fair. I, I can't say would you. Because love make, love make you do listen, some crazy things. If, Never. <laughs> I was right, about to let's keep it PG. Please. Right. <laughs> let's keep it PG. Um, I mm. mean, I've never been a team crazy for love because I'm not gonna be out here for right. nobody's raggedy son. Right. Um, that's just me. That's just my mo. Right. Um, and all of all that 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 Tchaikovsky was going through, you could have just wrote something nice and beautiful for us to hear. Exactly. Meanwhile, you have to go out and murder. Meanwhile, Strauss over here writing Death and Transfiguration. We got Resurrection over here from Mahler. You can roll something like that. Right, not like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was writing his little magicals or whatever. <laughs> That's why he was so depressed. All right. They didn't get there yet. It was 1590. Wow. Meanwhile, Bach was holding up in the, coming up in the rear. Exactly. Bach was almost here. Let me not lie about his his birth because you know, I don't know that offhand. Okay, um, should a composer's action dictate the way we view their music? Depends on what they did. If they're a triple murderer <laughs> and a child murderer, then yes. However, we still program but Gizwaldo. They do? Yeah, you magical is? What? I'm telling you. They, they be dressing up in their little... People are paying for that? <laughs> well, I like magicals. They they nice. You should listen. Look, we gonna find some. No, I took music history one to one. I'm more than fine. <laughs> some magicals are low key or low key. First of all, just some, not to me. Wow. Um, I mean, oh, I struggle with this because a lot of composers have done some really terrible things. But then again, it's not like they. It's not like they swept that. I don't know. I I can't really say because I don't know like how widespread Jaswaldo is. I I can't say because like for someone like Wagner, like it is known. It's not a secret what a trash person Wagner was. But at the same time, it's not like no nobody holding him accountable. This is the first thing. This is the first time I'm ever hearing of Jaswaldo. Mm-hmm. So to me, I'm like, oh well, they putting him on blast anyway. They yeah. you know, but. You know, for someone that has known him, there could be someone who knows his music and doesn't know about this. Right. So I don't know. I mean, I think the way we view, the way we view and the way we, and whether or not we program, because I think as musicians, I think we tend to be like, okay, aside from what I know about the composer, this is what it is about the music. Like at the end of the day, he was a fantastic magicalist. He wrote good magicals. They were revolutionary in their use of chromaticism. So I, to me, the view of the music doesn't change. It's still good music, especially when it's in context of the time. Um, whether or not we should program the music is where I struggle because it's like, if we view it as good music and we view it as revolutionary, then why wouldn't we program it? But it's a, I think it's the same thing with the R. Kelly thing. It's like, we need the, we, we, I, we still step in the name of love even though we oughtn't. Well, I don't right. anymore. Yeah. I'm, but like a lot of people still step in the name of love, even though we know what R. Kelly has done. So I think it's the same thing. So we view it as a good song, but do we play it at the function? I think it's like the same. Cause I sure did start st- skipping, uh, all falls down when it started coming on my thing. Right. After Kanye started being out here saying whatever. Who? Right. Um, and that's that's a perfect example of choose these slaves, choose West. You know, it's like, I I mean, I don't listen to Kanye's music. I w- I wasn't, I wasn't a true stan before he, yeah, 
he entered the sunken place and I'm surely not now. So I think when we think about Kanye, I mean, choosy slave shoes West. And when we think about, um, R Kelly, we got to think about the same way as Gizwaldo. Does, does it change? What does, what they did change the change their music? No, but should we program it? And it's like, is R Kelly even revolutionary? I don't know. I can't say, but something like Gizwaldo, like who was really writing magicals like that at his time? You know, I, to me, I struggle with that. I don't really have, I don't really have it. Hey, wow, that's the kind of stuff we be writing in theory one on one here. But right, <laughs> <laughs> I can't really that. Maybe if Jezwaldo's wife had had her side piece trapped in the closet, then we they could have avoided all this. Or they could have really avoided. It. And how did sis? How are you so listen? Because I just don't think him coming up the. You ain't got no TV on or nothing. And really, like, listen, if you want to cheat, like, I get, like, first of all, I I, I don't get cheating. Yeah. Like that to me, I just, I just, just break up. But I mean, the the context is yeah, the time a little different, you know. But it's like you really gonna cheat on the man in his own bed, Like, come on. You know what we forgot about from the story? What the neighbors? Oh, (laughs) trifling neighbors. (laughs) Oh shoot! And that was my favorite part too because now, first of all, they were talking around the whole, the whole, uh, the whole town. Like, hey, you hear about Gizwaldo on them? But some look, I know this took place in Italy, but these people had to be black. Because when the police came talking about, hey yo, like what happened with Gizzo, they were like, Listen, I ain't seen nothing, right. I ain't hear nothing. I was in I was in my right. house. Right, I was watching my stories. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was reading my little um thing. Right. You know, I was knitting. I was I ain't seen right. nothing. I ain't hear nothing. Meanwhile, he he killed how many people? Right. You hear no type of screen, no gunshots. Right, you know, gunshots. You know they was using them boulder bullets back then. In fifteen ninety, you telling me you didn't hear a gunshot? <laughs> and there wasn't no firework. Right. And they like, no, we ain't seen nothing. We they had to be black. The black people don't care. They be like, mm, I ain't seen nothing. Right. I feel like there's no excuse for that these days. But back then, I would have had to be in that boat. Cause what you gonna do? You can't call nine one one. Right. I mean, if it happened today, like you're yeah. not gonna you're not gonna murder nobody next to me, and I'd be like, I ain't hear nothing. Like, <laughs> right. what? The least you could do is call nine one one. The least you could do is call nine one one. But what they gonna do? Help! Yeah. So so I, so a bullet going through my cranium next. Right, and we gotta wait for uh old boy to run across town and tell the chief and <laughs> <laughs> and him to ride on his goat back over <laughs> here. <laughs> By that time, just one or already next is in Croatia. Right. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, when Gizwato come over here and come up my head with his with his whatever instrument he using, right? Well, what what we gonna talk to the the town doctor? Right. Gonna come with his with that bag? bird with that bird mask on and his tweezers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna do pick bullet things out your brain. And we already ain't got no running water, so I'm good as dead. Right. Nope. I'm minding my business. Meanwhile, just water looking in the window from across the way, like, oh, when he when he see the police knocking on your door, he he look at yeah, what you see? I'll be like, sir, listen, I've been in the house all day. I ain't hearing nothing. I, ain't hearing right. nothing. I, I was listening to my music. I was on my Xbox. So right. I'll be like, guess what? Guess right. guess. I guess a rainbow. Talking about Jerry up the road. <laughs> What he look like? Right, nice young chap. What he look like? Oh, you talk about Geraldine's son. Oh, I haven't seen him. He back. <laughs> Listen, I mind my business. That's it. Like, like I said at the beginning of the episode, I just don't understand people who don't mind their business. So for me, I'd be like, I ain't hear nothing. I ain't seen nothing. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, my grandma, <laughs> every time something happened on our block, she'd be out the window. Okay, guess right. Waldo knocking up, going up to her and be like, you ain't hear nothing. You ain't seen nothing. <laughs> Why grandma all in the window? <laughs> but then the police come. Oh y'all, I ain't know. I ain't seen right. <laughs> um. Okay. Last question I have for you, Delaney. Um. Would you rather be respected in life, or have your legacy respected? Because the thing with Gizwaldo is people kind of like he got exiled and everything, and he died or whatever, and his music got forgotten or whatever. And then it was, it was resurrected. Um, it, it came about later on. Stravinsky was a huge fan of his, um, oh, which okay. makes sense because Stravinsky's writing is very intricate. It's like revolutionary. I, I, I don't mind Stravinsky. Um, and uh, so when it came back around and people were like, oh, hey, yo, but he was like really crazy and everything. Like, and all this stuff started coming up. So, I mean, for him... In his situation, it's like people thought you were crazy when you were alive and when you were dead. But at least he still has the um, 
he still has the legacy of like being a, a fantastic magicalist. So, would you rather be respected in life or have your legacy respected? I'd rather be respected in life. Why? Cause well, I care what happened after I'm dead. I'm chilling. <laughs> Because and I don't know I'm never gonna do nothing as bad as what he did. So like what like what's the worst they could say about me after I'm dead? But I love like see oh she she wasn't that great like all right okay me still kicking up kicking up my feet with God at the pearly gates and you still down here in this trash world so I, <laughs> like I don't know um well I do know yeah I don't, I don't care what people say about me after I die it's no concern of mine. I'm not a person that has to have the last the last word necessarily, but I'm just gonna feel this type of way if you throw in dirt on my name and I can't do nothing about it. Yeah, something a little spooky. Like, like and I all I care a lot about legacy, like like the name that'll be behind the name that my kids will be living about. You know, like I care a lot about that kind of stuff. So this question is actually really difficult for me because you're not gonna be like and also I'm not do? really a person what? What can you do? You can't do anything, but I still wanna have a nice legacy, like People like by no by no means am I comparing myself to someone like Martin Luther King, but like if you think about a name like that, it's like he has an amazing legacy. His kids live behind that legacy. When you think about a name like Obama, you know, his kids will forever carry on that legacy. So it's like for me, I rather do I rather do good work and not have to be appreciated. Especially since I don't need to really be admired. I don't really need to be like, Oh my god, Katie, that was amazing. Like, I got I'm not really that kind of person. I actually prefer if you don't. Um I rather have. I think in this case, even though both will be nice, I'd rather have a legacy. Like, well, you know, Katie did some really good work. You know, like I, I rather that. Let us know what you think in uh, in the comments below. Let us know uh, what's your reaction to this story. Um, let us know is there anyone that you want us to talk about in this little series. And also answer this question: Would you rather be respected in life or have your legacy respected? And we're moving on. We pulled the Black Excellence this week. Um, this week's Black Excellence goes to Aaron Charles Perez. Um, Dr. Aaron Charles Perez is professor of music education um, at Van- Vanderbilt um, University um, in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, and I picked her as Black Excellence this week because I just love seeing black women in these spaces she's she has her doctorate from peabody and she um directs the vanderbilt wind symphony and she teaches music education classes at vanderbilt and i just think it's so amazing um that to see a black woman in the space and just to see them um in the academic environment especially when it comes to music it's not something that i have seen thus far um so i thought that was really cool she also um stop doing me she also <laughs> look in the mirror literally <laughs> i'm not a doctor okay still um she also wrote a really cool article that we're gonna link um called do you see what i see and under representation of musicians of color um which is a really fantastic read um it talks about her situations it also shows pictures of her being absolutely sickening with this baton in hand and this pixie cut and you could never um so if you know her tag her um and let her know that we shouted her out um love to find her socials but we will link um her page on vanderbilt university's uh website and also the article that she wrote um and that's this week's excellence um black excellence (laughs) before we get out of here delaney is there a piece that you forgot about that you'd like to share with the people Sure, I don't really know if I. It's less that I really forgot about it, more that it took me a long time to listen to it. But um, this week I chose the Von Williams Piano Quintet in C minor, um, because it's nice and luscious, and you know we gotta cherish the chamber music that we have for bass, cause ain't barely none of it. So wow, it's not <laughs> we don't have anything. Um, the same little. You know, we have a couple of things that, like, nobody plays, but mm. there's probably a reason why nobody plays them. Um, but, yeah, it's a nice, luscious piece. I hope to be able to play it one day, and I hope it's a situation where it's actually fun to play and, you know, not the experience I have with Trout. But um, 
I don't know. That's the the piece I chose this week. It's really nice, really cool. I don't know why. I think because it's not it's not performed anywhere near as much as the Dvorak Quintet or the Trout Quintet, which is why I kind of just assumed. Like, I don't know what I assumed about it, but I just never listened to it because it wasn't as popular as the other ones. But once I listened to it, I was like, oh, this is lit. So, um, yeah, that's my piece this week. I'm going to link the recording that I listened to in the description to this post. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, at Classically Black Podcast. Um, all this information is in the description box below. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye, y'all.